Hello and welcome to Let's Talk About It podcast. I am your host, Apostle Rosemary of RCN Ministries and OSGA Apostolic Network. We are here today along with my wonderful husband, Apostle Herbie, um, who is also the apostolic overseer of all of our ministries along with me. And we're going to be talking about love according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So on this podcast on today, we want to just talk about 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and the love that it speaks about. We're going to be reading on today. I have the King James Version, the Passion Translation, and the Amplified. Um, But on today, we're going to read from the Passion Translation. It deals with love, the motivation of our lives. And it also deals with the perfect love. So we're going to begin to read At verse one, it says, if I were to speak with the eloquence in earth's many languages and in the heavenly tongues of angels, yet I didn't express myself with love, my words would be reduced to the hollow sounds of nothing more than a clanging cymbal. Verse two says, and if I were to have the gift of prophecy with a profound understanding of God's hidden secrets, And if I possess an ending supernatural knowledge, and if I had the greatest gift of faith that could move mountains, but have never learned to love, then I am nothing. And if I were to be so generous as to give away everything I own to feed the poor and to offer my body to be burnt as a martyr without the pure motivation of love, I would gain nothing of value. Verse four says, love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievements nor inflates its own importance. Verse five says, love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Six says, love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Verse seven says, love is a safe place of shelter for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as a defeat for it never gives up. The perfect love, starting at verse eight, love never stops loving. It extends beyond the gifts of prophecy, which eventually fades away. It is more enduring than tongues, which will one day fall silent. Love remains long after words of knowledge are forgotten. Verse nine says, our present knowledge and our prophecies are but partial. And 10 says, but when love's perfection arrives, the partial will fade away. 11 says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child on childish matters. For I saw things like a child and reasoned like a child. But the day came when I matured and I set aside my childish ways. 12 says, For now we see but a faint reflection of riddles and mysteries as though reflected in a mirror. But one day we will see face to face. My understanding is incomplete now, but one day I will understand everything just as everything about me has been fully understood. And verse 13 says, until then, There are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love. Yet love surpasses them all. So above all these things, above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. Apostle and Herbie have come here to say on today that we are seeing so much hatred, so much animosity, so much chaos, so much division, people are being wounded, people are being hurt, 
And a lot of it is coming from those that are professing that they're Christians. Lord, help us in this hour to understand truly what love is according to the word of God. Lord, help us to understand that love is what is also called charity according to the King James Version. The excellence of love and the amplified. We need to understand that without love, we are nothing. It does not matter how eloquently we speak if we do not have the love of God. If our hearts are impure and we do not possess his agape love. If we don't love our brothers and sisters because they look differently than we do or they talk differently than we do or they come from a different part of the world than we do. That is what God requires of his people. God help every professing man and woman of God that says that they love God and they know God and that they are Christ-like as a Christian. If they do not possess the love of Jesus Christ, they have done it all in vain and they have done it all for nothing. Lord, help us today to live a better life, to love more, to love deeper, to love broader, to embrace more, to understand more, to be able to see our brothers and sisters in different cultures and different people and different ethnicities. Even if our skin colors are not the same, our heart should be the same. Why? Because if we are Christ-like and we have accepted him as Lord and Savior, then guess what? We must possess the heart of our Father. And when we possess the heart of our Father, then guess what? We are able to look past our differences. We're able to look past our cultures. We're able to look past anything that has separated us before we came into the knowledge of who Christ was in our lives. Before we laid down our burdens, our sins, all of these things, we've laid them down. The word of God says that when we accept the Lord as, as our savior, then guess what? The old man passes away and behold, all things become new. So I want to ask this point on today. What are you holding on to from the old man? Have you gotten to a place now that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired? Have you gotten to a place now that you can love unconditionally? No matter who they are, no matter where they're from, no matter what language they speak, no matter the color of their skin, can we stand united in Christ? For the word of God tells us that a house divided will not stand. This is why we're seeing so much going on globally. Because guess what? The body of Christ has been divided. The body of Christ has been divided by hatred. The body of Christ has been divided by bigotry. The body of Christ has been divided by racism. The body of Christ has been divided by chaos, by discord. All of these things are not of God. It would behoove every man and woman of God that are professing Christians, but are that also have been called to lead the body of God and the body of Christ, the church in this hour to repent, to search your hearts, to do a self-examination and to ask God, God, what is it in me that I need to be delivered from? What is it in me that I need you to kill in me in order that I may raise up and live in you? In order to truly live in Christ, we have to forgive. We have to love. We have to let go. We have to allow God to heal us, to deliver us, to set us free and to restore us. Let us not forget the restoration. So many times people go down for altar calls. So many times people repent, but true repentance is when we repent and when we turn from our way of thinking to the new ideology of who God is in our lives. The word of God tells us that we must put on the mind of Christ. So if we have the mind of Christ, and if we have the heart of Christ, then guess what? We would not have these issues. So the problem with the body of professing Christians in today's society all over the world boils down and comes down to the one thing that God says. He is no respecter of person. Every man, woman, and child are created equally. And we must understand that we must stand together in order to live a true life of holiness in Jesus Christ. 
We cannot be divided. And God have mercy on every leader that are preaching from pulpits, that are telling their past their members as pastors that it's okay to be racist. It's okay to hate someone. It's okay to feel as though that we are superior to someone else. The devil is a liar and I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. God help these leaders to get it right. Help these leaders to understand that God created everyone equally. Help them to understand that we all have the same Heavenly Father. Help them to understand that they're leading their people straight to hell. Lord, help them and have mercy on them, God. Lord, have mercy. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 12, it reads, No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfect in us. We have to love y'all. The answer, in spite of everything, we have to show love. Mm -hmm. The answer, we have to show humility. Mm -hmm. The answer, to one another. And um, to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Here it goes again. Yes, God. The answer, love. You know what I'm saying? We have to love one another. You know what I'm saying? God is love. Look um look at um first Peter chapter four and verse eight. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love cover a multitude of sin. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We have to have we have to have that um agape love. Mm, yes, God. You know what I'm saying? Let us understand, men and women of God, those who have been lost. Many people have been taught to hate others that do, do not look like them, that look different than them. But this has become a generational curse in families, in bloodlines. And yes, that is true. And we need to understand in this hour, that the change we desire to see in others begins with each one of us individually. We have to start with the person that we're looking at in the mirror that's staring back at us. Mm -hmm. It's a self-case. We cannot look for other people to make progress and to change when we're unwilling to bend, to be able to allow ourselves to love unconditionally. We must possess love. As Apostle Herbie has said, we must have the agape love of Jesus Christ. For without it, we are nothing. It does not matter how much we can read the word of God and and comprehend and understand and get revelation and knowledge and all of these clarities. It does not matter how well and eloquently we're able to dissect the word of God and speak in different languages here on earth on earth, these earthly languages, multi-language, and then we have all of these heavenly angelic tongues, and we are prophesying, having the gift of prophecy, and all of these profound understandings of the hidden secrets of God, but our hearts are dirty. We do not have the love. Lord, help us to get it right in this hour, in this season. Lord, help us to turn from our wicked ways. Lord, help us to take these hearts of stone and God give us a heart made of flesh. Lord, that we will be able to feel, to know, and to understand. Lord, give us the opportunity, God, that we will be able to know in our hearts that God, you know what? I remember it was there, but God, you dug it out by the root and you destroyed it. God, could you curse that thing like the fig tree? And you commanded it to dry up and to die, to cease living. Why? Why did God do that? Because the fig tree was a counterfeit. It appeared to be to be healthy. It appeared to be fruitful. It appeared to be a beautiful fruit uh, fig tree. But what happened to this fig tree? Why did why did Jesus curse it? Because it was a counterfeit, as I said. And I can say that because the Word of God tells us there was no fruit on the branches. Right now, when we see men and women of God that go along with hatred, 
that go along with discord, chaos, and division, that go along with racism, that go along with discrimination, that go along with all of these things just because someone is not the same race, the same ethnicity. Lord, help us. It is not of God. And I pray that in this hour, in this season, that God begins to remove these people quickly because they are polluting and they are contaminating the oracles of the gospel. They are tearing down the altars of the word of God that have been built up from biblical principles and, and the, print, the biblical teachings of Jesus Christ based on the word, the unadulterated word of God. So Lord, help us in this season. Help us to do better. Help us to be better. Help us to have your heart, God, to have your mind, God, to possess your spirit, God, to walk in unity, to walk in love, to walk in oneness and be on one accord with our brothers and our sisters. Because the Lord said in his word, when Jesus said this, the works that you see me do, you shall do them and greater works shall you do. Why did he say that? Because when two or three are gathered in his name, it says there he is in the midst. Mm -hmm. The greater works comes through multiplication. The multiplication comes through being able to go outside of the highways and hedges, according to Luke 14, 23, and compel them to come. Compel those to come. Join with those who are different. Join with those who have just come into the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. Love on them. Teach them. God is looking for us to be his hands, his feet, his mouthpiece in his people. God bless you and God keep you. Apostle Herbie, is there anything else you want to add? The last thing I want to say, let's look at John 3.16. Mm. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. See what I'm saying? Love. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and we have to show love at all times. You know what I'm saying? And not, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? In front of them and show love, but behind their back, you know what I'm saying? It's a whole different story. We have to show love. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 God bless you. We pray that this podcast be a blessing to help you start out your Wednesday morning. Awesome. Today, um, to just be able to give a nugget um, or, or really just a seed. We pray that this seed be planted on fertile ground, that it takes roots, uh, deep roots, and it begins to branch out and grow into a full blown tree that cannot be hindered, that, that bears good fruit in its due season. We pray that every man and woman that listens to this podcast message on love, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, understands what the love of God, the charity, charity is the love of God. If we can give all these things, but we have not the love, which is the charity towards our fellow men and women, our brothers and sisters, whoever they may be, and wherever they may be from around this world, here on earth, because the love of God is perfect love. It is love that is the motivation of our lives. It is the excellence of love. That is what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is. We pray that you all have been blessed today. We pray you all have a wonderful day. Um, and we pray that you all are able to receive this word and allow it to go in as a two-edged sword and to begin to cut away some things that you've held on to too long that have been hindering you and that's been holding you in bondage all of these years. Some people that have been taught to hate, they've been taught to be divisive, um, to, to, to just go along with the status quo of taught hate and division and discord, maliciousness, and all of these ugly things, all of these fruits are from the devil. It has nothing to do with God. So if you are a man or woman of God that is listening to this podcast, we are praying and asking God for mercy for you, that he will bring you into the knowledge after hearing this podcast on today on love of who you are to be in Christ Jesus and that you will turn after you repent, 
truly repent, true repentance, we say. Turn from your wicked ways, repent to God, allow God to come in and to surgically remove anything that's not like him. Allow God to crucify your flesh that has to die in order for you to live and live effectively in Christ Jesus. God bless you. May God keep you until next Wednesday. We love you all. God bless.